not a naturally beautiful scene, but but Africa's sort of made up of a whole lot of these beautiful scenes that mesh together like well-oiled cogs, and in that is the beauty of harshness. You're totally right. Most people would be absolutely horrified um, to even watch this python, and yet it is so exquisitely beautiful. It's first light. Their day starts at 4 a.m., listening to the bush. May as well go straight on to work. Working with the top predators in Africa keeps Derek and Beverly on their toes day and night. But their life with leopards is about to become even more extraordinary. The cub they found when she was only eight days old is now six months old. She's survived the most critical period of her life. Mother and daughter are out on a territorial patrol. As usual, Derek and Beverly are along for the ride. These moments of mother-daughter bonding will help us create a rounded, more balanced film. People sometimes feel that all that predators do is kill, but the other social skills will help her develop into what one day will be a masterful killer. And in telling this story, I'll reach for the common ground between our species, not anthropomorphically, but looking at the obvious warmth between mother and daughter, their playfulness, and those emotions you have to know exist. These are things we all feel. It's visceral. We relate to them because we feel them too. Besides, we all know what it's like to hate being washed behind the ears as a kid and take for granted a parent's attention as if it'll always be there. The subtle, reassuring touch of companionship. Filmmakers' daily adventures are not always reflective moments. Becoming a part of the system, as opposed to apart from it, is our goal. But not quite to this extent. When you can see our demise, you can see the driver's happy face. What we will spare you is the language which gets worse in proportion to the depth of the mud and the urgency of a leopard sighting. But what you cannot even imagine is the icy winter chill on the wind. This morning the temperature is quite a lot less than 30 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, there was ice this morning, not only on the water but among this particular crew as well. At times like this, I always feel it's better to be the wood collector, so Derek has something to place under the tires and stay well clear, and never to offer assistance. Oh. And as for advice, be warned, don't even go there. For world peace, I suggest enduring the four hours rather than make a suggestion that may save a few minutes. We've got the luxury of time anyway. This is a three-year project. I just hope we don't spend most of that stuck in some box somewhere. The more time they spend, the luckier they get. By the second year, they find the cub 85% of the time and spend hours and hours with her each day. It's almost a daily routine for all of them. Cameras come out, always to be ready, and she barely bats an eyelid now. A lot of cleaning goes on, and she takes it all in, as usual. Daily notes are made, tapes marked, in fact, they try to make this all as casual as possible. 
This routine of her rather boring companions is just part of her life now. As Beverly vacates her seat to make a meal, the cub watches closely. But what she does next takes them completely by surprise. It's time for a little exploration. It's our water bottle. At first, they find this all quite interesting. The ultimate display of trust. And as always, they hate to interfere or to frighten the little cub. And beyond that first foray into their world, something else catches her eye. Hey, hey, hey. This is getting a little bit out of control. She's completely transformed. Inquisitive and playful, this wild leopard is suddenly interacting with them on a level they never expected. As endearing as this innocent gesture is, it suddenly worries Derek. It's exciting to see an animal extend its trust like this. But this is so far that it takes us completely by surprise. This is a wild leopard. We've never encouraged her. Today, something just clicked inside her brain. I wasn't fearful because she was investigating us. Not a danger at all. But then Derek called it first. It's as if she suddenly realized that we're more animated than just a vehicle. She's just comprehended that we're two living beings in here. Things just like her. She's just seen through that invisible barrier we like to keep between us. And this could go to a place I don't want it to. She'd crossed a line, but how do they communicate that clearly and without scaring her? I'm going to just simulate the mother's growl by turning on heat. This is like a hiss, and the heat is blowing the air at her. Did you hear the call? She's confused. It was a cup call. She knows she's been reprimanded. That worked. This was the gentlest way I could think of to discipline her. The last thing we want to do is scare her off, but it's a line we don't want to cross. Over the next few weeks, Derek and Beverly will question their core beliefs of the ethics of their profession. As they sit with their leopard, they know that something important happened here today. I know it's crazy, but we'll seldom declare it a rain day. There's always a chance of finding a drenched cat out there. When she was a few weeks old, there was a huge lightning strike right next to us. We thought she might associate that noise with us. But instead she ran to the car for cover. When we told the story to the guides at Mombo camp, they named her Lachadima. It means light from the sky or lightning. It's a very red cat under here. The real difference between lions and leopards is that when it's tough going, foul weather, or if they get sick, a leopard only has itself to rely on. Lions have a whole prior to take up the slack or to lie against in the cold. It's an absolute wonder then that there are four times as many leopards in the world as there are lions. We've been comparing the big cats and at fewer than 23,000 left, lions may well disappear quite soon, much sooner than leopards. But what is certain is that at this rate of decline, I doubt either will last another 50 years. And still, the daily work takes them deeper and deeper into the Okavango, following the big cats they are so desperate to save. 
We sometimes go on the theory that if the lions can make it across, we should be able to as well. It doesn't always work, maybe 50-50 odds in a river like this. These crossings are usually quite tense and fairly quiet in our truck. The trick is once committed not to hesitate, apparently. One soft spot and we'll be stuck for hours again. Derek almost has to feel his way across with the front wheels, but when we work with lions in the delta, they can hunt for hours through the stuff. It's nerve-wracking. The worst is when you see lions that are three feet at the shoulder and they start to swim. Forging their way through puts them right into the action. The big surprise here is that these magnificent full maned lions raging with aggression can't always dominate the plains. A top predator chasing natural prey, you'd expect a certain result, but buffalo are not that easily intimidated. Makes you think really about that balance of power. There are few species that can really change the environment in a major way. The lions affect everything. The health of the buffalo, the amount of grazing as a result of overgrazing, and they keep that balance. Without them, everything starts to unravel. Elephants are the other key species of Africa. They can change everything one way or the other. And I think that one needs to show that visually, the power of the ability to dominate, even the environment. When photographing elephants, Beverly often drops down low to accentuate that size, in some way pay homage to their power. It's emotionally hard for us when the elephants come in conflict with the lions we are following. But even then, they advance our understanding another notch. In previous work, the Joubert's were the first to reveal to a largely skeptical scientific community that lions in some places hunt elephants with surprising success. What we do is part adventure, part art, part science. It's why we're so balanced, or not. It's why we're so passionate, though, about what we do. It serves all sides of us. Derek and Beverly have followed Lacadema for over two years through her childhood and adolescence 